Hey, this is your girl, Miss T, a.k.a. Harlem Heron. Thank you for tuning in to Straight Talk with Miss T. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I love to hear your feedback, and I love talking back to y'all. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can know when I post new videos. But again, thank y'all so much. I love talking to you guys. Straight Talk with Miss T. to weigh in on the Biggie documentary on Netflix I personally personally, no matter what I feel about Puff I thought it was really good I thought you know seeing new footage of him his mom you know her birthplace of Jamaica which is you know my dad's birthplace I thought it was really good um, his grandmother God bless her 96 years old Mm. and his uncle you know I thought it was just really nice I don't know if y'all peeped on the uncle's phone case the ready to die photo that's on the album it looked like he got that made in metal I thought that was really really dope and this biggies like the, I thought I was like okay but um I thought it was really good I thought it was really good I thought it was really good yeah um <sighs> puffy I guess when you do speak of Biggie, Puffy has to be involved in some kind of way. He gonna make a, uh, I don't care if it's a penny or for Biggie some kind of way. You know, I'm so glad that D-Rock, or I think he said it was Biggie's idea to start recording everything. So I thought it was real dope that they did do that. And um, yeah, it was just sad, man. That boy was so talented, it's ridiculous. And if, and you know, one thing about me, I give it up. If you didn't see the interview with Mr. C and Mano, check that out. I thought it was real dope. So much history was learned. Yeah, the Mr. C interview was one of the best interviews I've seen. Um, I think Mano did a great job letting him do his thing, but the history... I learned a lot and it's like you just never know who was the one who impacted someone's career um, started someone's career you know wrote their first song so I thought it was really really dope you know some people were more interested in um, his sexual preference and I guess was more interested in hearing him talk about you know the issues that he had with transsexuals um that was a small part of the video almost to the end and really it had no significance in how i view him which uh, all of us heard about it some of us we honestly we need to mind our business like whoever somebody's sleeping with if it doesn't affect you mind your business and that goes for anything snitching too you know, I'm going to get on that because y'all, you know, if it doesn't affect you, mind your business. You know, we are so, we, uh-huh, you see that, yeah, that brown, that black. We are so, we are always concerned and we invest time in things that have nothing to do with us. And if most of us spent that time being more productive and spending that time applying it to our own lives you know spending using that energy and applying that energy to figure out what we're not doing and what we should be doing instead of worrying about what somebody else doing we are better people oh yeah now I've spoken to several people about this. I'm going back to the Biggie thing. And <laughs> I'm not going to say the name right now. I just can't. Even though I told several people who it was. But somebody that I was cool with back in the days. They got a call that was... I won't say he was influential. But he was in the industry. He wasn't no rapper, no singer, or no a and but he was in it. 
but he's from the streets. And he got a call one day because he was dealing with one of my people. And when he picked up the phone, he told Puff, I don't know if he called him or Puff called him, I don't know. So I don't want to lie about that. But my people sitting right there was like, he picked up the phone and was like, yo, I'm telling you. Now he talking to Puff. I'm telling you. I'm not going down for this biggie shit. Now, for someone to say that, what are your thoughts? If I say that I'm not going down for something, that means in some way, shape, or form, I could be implicated because I was either around. I could be implicated because I may know who did it. Someone may assume I plotted with some people or I know the people who plotted. But he said this to Puff on the phone. I'm telling you, I'm not going down for this biggie shit. And I wonder why would he say that? And I've told a few people over the years about this conversation and who the individual was, which I'll save that for another time. But I think that's, um, am I surprised? No, because I don't know, Puff just always seemed a little sketchy to me. <laughs> and I don't want to hate the guy or not like the guy, but his track record his track record speaks volumes when it comes to his artists. I don't know if I already did a video on this or not. I don't know. But. Who was really successful? Big and Junior Mafia would have made it. Because Big would have made sure that would have happened. Hands down. Mace probably got out by the skin of his teeth. By the skin of his teeth and did well but if you look at Puff Daddy roster like everybody damn near fell off either ended up on drugs and alright let's total I don't know if it was true when they said Pam was working at McDonald's when everything went you know, sour with their group. I don't know if that Keisha, she came off good. She done married Omar Epps. Kudos to her, and they still together. Black love. Beautiful. They are a beautiful couple. But where's Johnny Depp? He started smoking dust and went to jail. Black Rob. Who you say he robbed in a the hotel? They say he robbed somebody. He wasn't. Looking too good. Craig Mack got sick and died. Listen to what I'm saying and pay attention. Okay, we had G Depp, Black Rob, Craig Mack, Danity Kane, Dylon and Dylon. <laughs> y'all remember that skit on the Chappelle show the funniest ever I think we we played that over and over for years I tell you Dave Chappelle is the best but who was uh, making the band nobody out of making the band made it <sighs> nobody made it out of bad boy but Puff if I was him, I can't be gyrating around and all that, knowing that everybody on my label either ended up in jail, smoking crack on dust. Like, bad boy just ran people crazy. Mace is lucky for starting Harlem World and getting the hell up out of there. I don't know some... Like I think I said this before about a black cloud being over Puff with that whole city college thing from the beginning. But um sorry y'all, I was just eating something. I'm gonna make sure. But it's a black 
it's just not I don't know his business has not been I don't see I don't care how much money he has your product speaks for itself his product is the people who were under his label and none of those products flourished but yet you end up living lavishly but everybody under you who was solely signed to bad boy now you had him uh you had artists but they had management elsewhere where they were signed to someone else like mary was always signed to someone else bad boy was like the management you had faith that wasn't solely signed under bad boy if i'm not mistaken like they was under mca like jodeci but those ones or those individuals or groups that were solely shit you see what the locks had to do huh they had to get gangster gangster you know puff always pulling that harlem card i don't know if you left harlem at two years old you're not from harlem you was born here I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to be honest, maybe somebody could prove me wrong, but I've never seen Puff in Harlem, and I was in the streets. I was up and down 8th Avenue. Okay, if you went to Rucker a couple of times, that don't mean you're from Harlem. Who's you screaming this? I'm from Harlem. No, you're not. You're from wherever you moved to when you was two years old. That's where you're from. Like, I was born in the Bronx. I ain't from the Bronx. I'm from Harlem, baby been in Harlem since what 1970 71 I'm from Harlem no 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 well correction I was actually born in Flower Fifth Avenue I was born on Fifth Avenue yes <laughs> it was a hospital there many moons ago called Flower Fifth that I honestly think is Mount Sinai today but it was called Flower Fifth Avenue that's where I was born actually but the address on my old black and white birth certificate i think we was up on sherman avenue or something like that but right after that we right here 133rd so right i'm from harlem all day every day this dude always screaming i'm from no you not stop it yo puff could drain you just even thinking about his nonsense real talk i don't know maybe it's just me but he might be a very nice person i'm not sure about that because i hear things um, and I got somebody like family to me that's really close to him. I mean, like, like this. I'm not going to say who that is. And I think they, yeah, real, real tight. Like, got him on speed down. Boom, boom. But, um, yeah, that Biggie thing was really good. And again, you know, Puff, I don't know, he just got some bad, what do you call it? A bad aura or... I don't know, something. Like, if I was an artist, I don't care if my sign and bonus was five million and that you wouldn't recoup once I make because you know the bonus money is just money that they're gonna recoup later. So all them chains and cars and money that they give you at the beginning, they recoup that. He couldn't give me five, he couldn't give me ten million unrecoupable if that's a record I mean if that's a word and give me five points on my I just couldn't do nothing with Puff I don't know I'm, I don't know maybe I don't know maybe it's just me but it's just crazy y'all seen this tra it ain't just me y'all seen this track record it was just not good but anyway watch the documentary if you haven't I think Gene Dill said something about him. Like, I don't know why he said it was all a nightmare. I don't get it. He hate Puff so much. So anything I think that Puff do, he do not like. He goes in. I mean, I hope that man heart gets, I don't know. But, I mean, I guess he get views off of talking about Puff. I don't know. But, you got to let that go, baby. Ain't no way in hell that uh, somebody's going to be on my head like that. Where I'm just going in, in, in. Nah, it ain't that serious. But, um, yeah. But watch it. Watch the Mano interview with Mr. C. 
and it's something called Hopelessly in Love. I think it's on Lifetime. I think these are new shows with Faith talking about her and Biggie. I think those are those are the three things that you can probably watch. But yeah, that you know, that's my way in on the whole um Netflix documentary. I loved it. Only because it wasn't like that explosive, but because you know it was new footage of him, him talking about his moms and her going back home and you seeing who Biggie grew up around every summer when he went back to Jamaica with his mother and what really influenced him musically. So I thought it was really, really dope. But yeah, that's my take on that. I might come back and do another something on the re what happened recently with Kirk Franklin and his son and him getting crazy on the phone with his son and using profanity, which... I ain't got a problem with it, but yeah, that's another video. But yeah, that's my take on that. Um, y'all be good. Talk to y'all soon.